On behalf of the League of Women Voters of Arlington and Vision 2020, we welcome you to this event, um, introduction to town meeting, and congratulate you on your election as a town meeting member. And I want to thank and introduce our town moderator, John Leone, who's going to tell you everything you always wanted to know about town meeting. Thank you. All right. Thanks, I'm John Leone. I'm the town moderator. How many are new town meeting members? Is it everybody? Okay, we have one who's not. He just likes me. Uh, so, have you watched town meeting? Do you understand any of it? Or are you start at the beginning? The moderator, my job is basically I'm the chairman of town meeting. We follow the warrant. If you didn't save yours from the advocate from a few weeks ago, you'll get one in your package. The selectmen have mailed out, I think yesterday, you went into the mail, a package that has the warrant. It will have package for the selectmen and all their recommended votes, for FinCon and all their recommended votes, and maybe some other stuff put into there, including my letter, which you should read because it's really important, and how to be a town meeting member. So basically, we're going to go over this tonight. Um, so those, the warrant is what we're going to discuss. So my job will be to present each of the articles in the warrant. We start at one, we go right through to the end. I think it's 54 this year. I haven't memorized that told me yet. So we go through in order, I'm going to tell you how many exactly. Ah, 56 articles this year. So we'll start at one, go through, each one we'll address, we'll debate, we'll have a debate on that, and then we'll eventually move, call the vote and move on it and take the motions. Each of those articles, the selectmen have reported on the bylaws, um, Redevelopment Board will get their report as well. Any zoning bylaws they report on, the financial, FinCon, the financial Committee reports on anything having to do with money. All the other ones, they read some citizen's articles. So in those packages you get are the recommended votes of the selectmen. We don't vote what's on the warrant. The warrant's strictly what we're gonna do, it's our agenda. So you should actually take a little bit of time and read through all of those reports. It's not heavy reading, it's pretty light. There's a lot of verbiage and everything, but we don't want to just look at what the recommended vote is. Because that is what we're going to be debating. And if there's no recommended vote, it says vote of no action. That means we're not going to do anything on it unless somebody else, one of the proponents of the article, if it was a citizen article, they have to come up with their own recommended substitute motion. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So we'll follow through, do the selectmen's, and we, they get up because it's theirs, or the FinCom get up first, they get the first crack at it, they'll try and sell us on their point of view and why we should go with what they're saying. Anybody can amend it during the meeting, but if it's going to be long, you have to do it, you have to, you should see me if you want to change anything, because I want to see it first, and the town council has to see it, not that we're going to stop you, but we're just going to make sure it's properly worded and properly formatted. Um, <clears throat> so eventually, after everybody's spoken or we've heard it and we've beaten the horse to death twice, someone's going to get up and move the question. After they move the question, all you can really say is motion to terminate debate on the article before us and all matters before that article. If you say anything else, we can't terminate debate because that's in our bylaws. So you have to say just those magic words. And if you're straying a little bit, I'll help you or someone else in the crowd will kind of guide you to say just those words. We vote on it, two-thirds vote, we stop debating it, and then we vote. I will explain what we're going to vote on. Say, all right, this is a recommended vote, it's in your report, if, and I'll, if it's short, I'll read it. If it's long, I'm not going to read it. I assume everybody can read, and they should have read it themselves. So then we take the vote. Um, it, before, and year prior to this year, was a voice vote first. The yeses and the noes. And the moderator would declare the yeses have it, the noes have it. Now this won't change. If five people in the crowd don't believe me, think I got it wrong, they can stand up and doubt the vote and we would have a standing vote. If 30 people stood up, we would have a roll call, which is literally go through and call everybody's name and they would shout out yes and no. But this year we're going to have clickers. Oh, I'm not supposed to call them clickers. Handsets. Um, we're going to vote electronically. It's the first time for everybody. It's going to be an experiment. Um, when debate's terminated, 
the um, OTI Option Technology, that's the company we hired to run these things for us. They're going to have a guy sitting over there. He's going to tell me the computer's ready. I'll tell everybody, vote. There'll be a 20 second countdown clock and you can vote. One, yes, two, no, three, abstain. That's it. This will talk to the computer. The computer will talk back and it'll tell you, yes, vote received, no vote received. So you'll know that it got it right. If, if you think it got it wrong, press the vote again. And you have 20 seconds, you can keep changing it. Um, until the clock stops, then the computer locks down. If you press the wrong button at the last second, too bad. There's no way to change it. Um, I ask the guys, well, what if I press one and it records a no vote? He just like looked at me like I had two heads and was a total idiot. He says, it can't. It's foolproof. Well, yeah, technology's not foolproof, but it's pretty close to it because it's computer magic and I don't know how it works. But it's supposed to be pretty good far as I can see. And the computer guys on the committee said it works and it's fine and it's no way to hack it. So that's, that's that. So on the articles, we'll go through them. Recommended votes of the selectmen. Now, say you have a vote you don't like. They want to have all the stoplights run for 25 minutes before they change. You can make a recommended vote, a substitute motion. I'll have them up in the front. If you're going to have any beforehand, email me. I have a card here. It's got my email. It's got my phone number. Get one. I'll send you the substitute beforehand. You have to get that, fill it out, get three of them to the front of the room, up to me, and you have to place one on every chair, like tonight. See these pieces of paper? You'll find paper all over your chairs. So you'll want to get that on everybody's chair the night before we're going to talk about the article. How are we supposed to know that? You've got two weeks. You're going to get the paperwork this weekend. You should know by a week from Monday if you want to have the substitute. The first night, we're probably going to get through six articles. So figure anything after six, you should be ready to go. The first night, you bring it in. Um, why? Why do I have that rule? Because initially, because I'm a slow reader. I don't want to be trying to read someone's complicated substitute article while I'm trying to listen to the debate and then make a rational, informed decision on it. It just it doesn't work as far as, for me, it didn't work. So that's, I instituted that rule when I became moderator. And everybody pretty much likes it um, because it does give us time to ponder. It does give you time to think about it, form your own questions, and have an informed debate about it. So that's, if you do think you want to do it, please just contact me and I'll help you. Um, and I'll run it by Doug Heim, town council. He's new, he's really helpful this year because he is new. But I think even in future years he's going to be helpful because I've had a lot of chats with him. So what happens at town meeting? First night you're going to come in. And you'll come through the front doors. Oh, let's even go back. Parking. The earlier you get here, the closer you're going to park to the town hall. People start arriving around 7.40. Um, the lot fills up pretty quick, mostly with the town employees. You can park behind the big old school. If, you know, people don't really realize that. Or you're going to park in the streets. But the closer it is to 7.30, the farther away you're going to be. So it's a word of warning. If you can walk, go for it. Um, the night of the meeting, you'll come in like every night. You'll come in the front door. There's the two doors, a door on the right and a door on the left. You go in the door on the left. Janice Weber, Weber, sorry, don't call her Weber. Janice Weber, the assistant clerk is sitting at a little table. She'll ask who you are. She'll check you in, um, give you a little badge, a piece of paper that says town meeting member. One of the town meeting members, Josh Lobel, will have made everybody a button. So there'll be all these buttons. You can pick one up. It says, John Leone, Precinct 8, town meeting member. Get your button, you can wear it if you want. You don't need it. No one's going to ask you to see it, but it's just kind of, he wants us to walk around town with them so everybody knows uh, who our town meeting member. So you check in with Janice. This year, you're going to, because of the clickers, you'll just move right to the right, and there's going to be another table there staffed by the Le Electronic Voting Study Committee volunteers and maybe some high school kids if they ever get back to me. You'll tell them your name. 
they'll look you up. Now, where'd my list go? Oh, they're going to look you up on a list. You can come look afterwards. Everybody by precinct has already been assigned a clicker number. This one is one. This one is actually Nancy Butts clicker. But this not, because this is the one they just sent me. So we'll all have our clicker number with the number. And then you'll turn around. And between those two doors are two eight-foot tables. It's full of paperwork. Um, look through, see what you don't have. People put substitute motions there. There'll be the annual report there. Extra copies of the selectmen's report, FinCom reports. Everybody's reports will be back there. And just other stuff that's of interest. So pick it up. You'll get a package. Um, there's also a folder, which I believe the town clerk puts together, that has a copy of the warrant in case you lost yours. Um, some other paper. It also has a parliamentary guide, which goes through what are the different motions that we make and what can you actually make a motion on. This will explain what they all are. <coughs> motion to dissolve, adjourn, point of no quorum. They're basically parliamentary procedural motions. The only ones we mostly use are lay something on the table, postpone to a date certain, um, or to reconsider or um, move the question. Those are the main ones that Arlington uses. There's all these other ones, but we don't really use them too much. Um, so you'll get one of those, look it over. Any questions, again, ask me. I'll kind of tell you what they are. Where do these motions come from? Town meeting time. This is our book. This is our rules of order. This is what we use. We don't use Robert's rules of order. We use town meeting time. It's put together by the Mass Moderator Association. Most, I think about two thirds or more of the towns in Massachusetts use this as their parliamentary guide. In the letter I'm sending you, it tells you how you can order one. They're 25 bucks. You can either bring in a check, give it to me, I'll mail it off to you. You can go online to the Mass Moderator Association. You can take a look, pass it around. And order it through their website. They'll mail it right out to you. Um, they like me, I'm the biggest book shill. I sell more books than anybody, but it's, it's good because it really gives you an understanding of what town meeting is, how it evolved, how it started, and how we ended up here with the rules. Under the old moderator, um, John Warden, he would let people get up and make points of order about anything. It would delay our meeting probably by two or three hours overall, over the seven or eight nights, easily. I read what a real point of order was, and if it wasn't exactly what it said in town meeting time, I won't allow it. Now no one really makes them anymore. A point of order was before, oh, he said something bad about my street. Point of order, I want to get up and talk about it. And he'd let him. I don't. Point of order is, it's hot in here. These people are noisy. I can't hear. Um, can we open some windows or something like that? Something that uh, disrupts the order of the hall. So I went with what the book says and cut out a couple hours of delay in the meeting. Not that I'm all about rushing the meeting, but you know, we can get through the town meeting in less than 10 sessions. I'm all for it. If we can get it, last year we did it in six. This year I'm shooting for five because it's 50 articles. We may do it because we had. 52 articles last year, it was five. We had a special for one night, so it really took six nights. So that's my personal goal. Let's see what happens. Um, that's going to guide us. I'll often, you'll, the other thing that we talk about is scope, the scope of the article. It's the article will say we're going to talk about, well, I'm going to pick this one here. Uh, article 8, Outdoor Lighting, Dark Skies Bylaw. So if someone wants to change the way our street lights and people's lights on their buildings don't, can't shine up anymore. And they'll have a substitute motion about that. We'll all get it the first night, hopefully. Um, 
That's what we're going to talk about. Someone else can get up and say, well, I think that all the parks should have lights on all the time and they should be on timers. That's not really within the scope. So I'm going to let them babble for a minute or two, then I'm going to cut them off. Or one of the other meeting members will start yelling things like, John, scope, scope. And I'll say, oh, yeah. Because um, I, I don't always catch things. I kind of forget sometimes. I'll call them out on it and tell them to get back into the scope of the article and narrow it down. Or sometimes it's just so off. They'll get off and start talking about the, some truck has bright LED lights and it really bothers them. You know, hello, can't do it. So I'll just cut them off right there. So scopes, rigor, sort of rigorous, rigorously enforced because we want to stay on the topic, move forward, and not get off base and off topic. So that, that's one of the things we deal with. Um, so you got all your papers. I'm, I'm jumping around a lot, so just ignore me. You get all your papers. Where do you sit? Wherever you want. We don't have assigned seating. Sometimes you will sit in an assigned seat. You'll sit with your precinct members. You'll sit in certain places. Not here. You will find your friends. You'll sit with your friends. If you don't have any particular friends, you'll develop a buddy who you like to sit next to and talk to during the meeting. Um, that's fine as long as you don't interrupt everyone else. Or you'll find other like-minded people around you like Google. <coughs> Although it's going to be harder this year with the clickers. But you'll see, well, I usually kind of agree with what all those people are saying. Maybe I'll sit over there tonight. Some people have sat in the same seats for the whole 20 years I've been a town meeting member. Other people, they move every night. Now the benefit of being the moderator, I can see where they all go. But most people sit in the same area. I don't know if it's by habit. I mean, Steve, you sit in the same chair almost every night. Habit? Or you'd like it? I'll wait until that red chair up front to Oh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, Everybody will sit where they want, and that's fine. Um, someone gets there before you and sits in your chairs, too bad, it's not your chair. You have to sit next to them and grumble at them or something, I don't know. But, so you can sit where you want. Um, usually, we take a break at 9.30 for five, 10 minutes, um, and somebody's selling cookies in the hallway, so you run out and get your cookies. And then we come back and we go from eight o'clock to 11. Um, most nights we adjourn, someone makes a motion to adjourn right about 11 o'clock, either when a speaker's finished or if we finish discussing an article. If it's five of and we finish an article, someone will move to adjourn. Only once last year, I think we went a little beyond 11 because we were just finishing the article and we wanted to finish it and vote on it and get out that night. That usually 11 o'clock, we're out of there because we all got to go to work the next day and it's late. Um, that, that's sort of how the procedural run of the meeting is. We start with the warrant, we go through, we read what the selectmen say, what the FinCom says, and then we talk about them, we vote on them, and we deal with the procedural motions. Um, does anyone have any questions at this point? I know I kind of jumped around and went through a lot of stuff. Yep? Where's the tie? Hmm? Where we have a tie vote? Oh. Loses, has to win by a majority vote. So if we have a vote and it comes out to be an exact tie, 50 to 50, it loses. The votes are by majority rule, so it has to be at least 50% of everybody voting, except for, um, oh, I did bring that sheet. Anything having to do with bonding, when we're going to float a bond, has to be two thirds. Zoning bylaw changes, two thirds. For the town to buy property, take property by eminent domain, take lease easements on people's property, it has to be by two-thirds. For changing last year's budget, if we want to go back and change the budget from last year, it needs a four-fifths vote of town meeting to change a, the previous budget, or if it's during a special, it needs a nine-tenths vote, which is very hard to get. So usually, I think we've only had to change one, in the last couple of years, we had one instance where we had to go back and change a budget from the previous year and yep that was when a vendor got his bill to us late the bill came in after the year closed and in order to pay that bill we had to go back amend the budget and pay it 
but it was like six or seven thousand bucks. I mean, our budget ends up being that we vote on, excuse me, is about a hundred and eight, hundred nine million dollars. And by the time they finish with all the grants and the money from the state, things that we don't necessarily vote on, we are the purse strings of the town. We decide what gets voted on. It ends up being about $135 million is what Arlington spends a year. So $6,000, $7,000, come on, pay the guy. We had to debate it. We had to go down and have a vote, and we had to count to make sure it was four-fifths, unless it was unanimous. Yeah? So uh, I believe you, this year in the special town meeting, there is a vote to amend last year's budget. Well, it depends what it was for. If it's for contract negotiations to fund police and things of that nature for a previous year contract. I believe that's just by majority. I'll look that up and have a straight answer on that one. That's, um, yeah, it's, um, well, that's your appropriation for FY 2014 collective bargaining. So we're still in 2014. So whether we need a four fifths for that or nine tenths, I'll, I'll figure that one out. I think that could just be a two-third vote. But that's a good, good call. So he's read his warrant. Mm -hmm. So we review all the budgets of all the town departments. Uh, and that's what the FinCom does. We'll present you with a detail of, say, the fire department. So many officers, so many um, lieutenants, captains, corporals, to, to, to do right through. Not who the people are, but what they're getting paid for all the town departments. And the way we handle the budget is, because it's such a um, big chunk of our meeting and what we're really doing, I'll go through and call out each separate budget, a library budget. And if anyone wants to talk about the library budget, they yell hold. So we go through all the budgets, the treasurers, the selectmen, the police, the school department, school department, all we do is give them money. We can't tell them how to spend their money because that's a separate elected entity and we as town meeting can't tell them what to do. We can only give them the money. Um, public works, cemeteries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We go through each and anyone someone wants to talk about, they yell hold. Then we go back afterwards and we only talk about those specific budgets. The other ones are accepted as going to, um, without um, debate, they're just going to go right through. We do that because it kind of makes people, again, think about what they want to do, what they want to talk about. Uh, public works is always talked about because, one, how many tons of salt did we use? How much sand did we use? Last year it was trees. We had that microburst down in East Arlington, wiped out all those trees. A lot of debate about trees. Um, they were we lost over 150 trees, I think. They were planning to plant 70. People wanted to give them more money for more trees. So the tree um, warden came in and told us that this is the most he can plant in a year. So, so we really got down into the nitty gritty of some of these budgets. In the end, we can change the budgets of any department, but at the end of the day, we still have to have a balanced budget. As a town, we can't deficit spend. So if you think you want to change your budget, and add $20,000 more to public works, Al Tosti, the chairman of the finance committee, is going to get up and say, well, where are you going to get the money? Two schools of thought on that. One is, it's not my problem, Al. You figure it out. And he's going to say, I got a, a, I balanced, we balanced the budget. You got to tell us where to get the money. Well, I don't know if you as a, as a town meeting member really have to do that or do they have to go back and do it. Or the other school of thought is, well, they have been working on it since January. And if you had an idea of the budget, you should have been visiting the FinCom for the last four months and raised your issues with them. It's a public meeting. They meet twice a week, every week for eight or 10 weeks. You should have been working with them. They'll entertain anybody who shows up and they'll hear you. They'll hear you out. and so. It's really a toss-up, you know, which, which is it? They're all volunteer committees. As you'll find out, most of the towns are run, a lot of the towns are run by volunteers. Finance committees, all volunteers. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals, all volunteers. Redevelopment Board, all volunteers, except for the staff that works in the planning department. So a lot of it is just volunteers doing stuff. 
you're all volunteering for town meeting. We're going to decide what change, laws get changed, what bylaws get changed, what zoning bylaws get changed, how we spend our money. We're all there for volunteering our time. So courteousness is a big, big factor here. I encourage everyone to listen to the debate, be civil. You can get up and disagree with someone, but you can't get up and call him a jerk and say, hey, he, he's a jerk for thinking that. That's, um, I'll, I'll say something to you. Because um, the meeting starts devolving, evolving down into name calling. It's going to go nowhere quick. It's just going to deteriorate and we won't get anything accomplished. So that's another one of my pet peeves as moderator. I just don't want to rule over name calling session. Um, I'll call you out on it. I'll just say something right away um, and do it. Yeah, you have a question? Yeah, um, what if we feel like we want more information about something, like what went into a budget line item, or why, then, why something costs what it's budgeted at? And you'll, you, when we come to an article, I'll call an article, example, the budgets, I don't know, they're in the mid-30s this year. Article 34, budgets. FinCom gets to go first because they're the ones who do it. So they get up, they say, here's our budgets, we worked really hard, don't you dare change anything. You raise your hand as soon as I call 34. I'll see you. Um, Stephanie Lucarelli, the town clerk, sits right next to me. The two of us will see everybody who raises their hands. Um, we know most people's names, so we'll write them down. I write down a list. I don't recognize you because you're new. But so I'm going to, in my mind, I'll write down, and eh, the guy in the third row, right, green shirt. And after a couple of people, it's going to get to the third row, it's like, sir, I'll call you. You get five, seven minutes. Everybody in their first time to the microphone gets seven minutes, second time, five minutes. So you can get up, walk to the front, introduce yourself. Uh, what's your name? David Watts. David Watts, precinct. Five. David Watts, Precinct 5, you got to identify yourself. So the court reporter, who also sits with us, who takes a transcript of everything we say for her posterity, um, knows who you are. Then you can just ask, um, how did the FinCom come up with $38,602 for a new cruiser? And I'll say, oh, good question, Mr. Watts. Mr. Tosti? Or because it's a capital item, I'll ask um, Charlie Foskett because he's the capital budget guy. So how did you come up with that number? And they'll give you the information. You can ask, well, how come there are 14 um, captains on the police force and only six patrol officers? A lot of brass, where's all the workers? You can ask it. Chief Ryan, how come? So you ask a question, I pick out who's going to best answer it for you. So all of the questions are directed to the moderator. The moderator then directs it to the proper person. So I'm really like the, the crowd control between people asking the questions and who gets answered. Some of the questions I'll have an answer to. And it's just easier and quicker if I just give you the answer. Other times I may ask someone who you think is not the right person, but I know they really have the answer. But if you have a question, um, that you don't think they're going to have an answer to, I encourage you to call the department chief, department head beforehand, call the town manager's office, David Watts, Precinct 5, just elected. I'm going to ask this question. Who can I ask it to now so that they can prepare? Because I don't like gotcha questions. Um, it's just, you know, it's just not fair to set someone up and make them look like a, like a doofus. They don't, don't know their work. They're all very smart folks who work for us, and they're all very dedicated and diligent. And if we ask them a question, they'll get the information. And it could be a question all of us have and don't realize it until you ask it. And if we're going to vote on it tonight and Chief Ryan doesn't have the answer tonight, and he said, oh, I'll have it on Monday of next week for you, what good's it going to do us? We're going to have to postpone that article and come back to it later and then start at the beginning again. So if you really do have a question, call who you think the right department head is and just ask for them. Uh, they'll get on the phone with you. They're, there's not that many employees really anymore since two and a half. So they'll get right on the phone with you or leave them a message. 
email them. All their emails are listed on the town website. Every department head, name, phone number, email. And ask them beforehand. I really encourage that. Or even if it's the same night, go up before the meeting. So we're all, you guys are all going to sit in the chairs. Up front, there's three podiums. The selectmen are going to sit as you're looking at them to the left behind the podiums. To the right is um, the, cha the head, the chairman, Stephen Byrne this year. Next to him is Marie Kapelka, who is the um, head, runs the selectman's office. So Marie's like the mayor of the town. You want something done, you want to find out information, ask Marie. She'll get you the answer. Next to her is town council, and then other department heads. And then way over to the right, is the redevelopment board and Carol Kowalski, the planning department. To the left behind, um, usually Bob, Bobby Jefferson, the fire chief, Freddie Ryan, police chief. Um, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank on her name. The head of the, um, Christine Conley, yeah. Head of public health sits there. And then on the side tables, you have Dave Good, who's our IT guy. He's gonna run the computer with the clicker guy, and Ed Malenga, the um, workers' comp lawyer. And there are a couple other department chiefs. They're all up there. You got a question, go up and ask them. They can maybe be able to make a phone call for the meeting and get your answer. So it's important to get your answers out, questions out beforehand so we can get answers. Um, anyone else have a question at this point? Okay. So. When are we going to use our clickers? We're going to use them on initially just to kind of test them out. We're not going to use them on every question. If it's a no action vote, which like I already told you, no actions, the selectmen don't have a recommended vote, and nobody else has a recommended vote, we're just going to take a voice vote because it's too quick. It's a recommended vote and no action, all in favor, yes, all opposed, no, boom, move on. To use the clickers, it'd take 20 seconds, and we have to look at the screen and see what the numbers are, and you know, we'll just take our voice votes. On the little procedural questions, like we're gonna give 500 bucks for the parade and the flags up and down the avenue on Veterans Day, we'll just do that by voice. Because you always vote them. You, you, it's just a lot of things, year to year, they have the housekeeping articles that we have to vote every single year. All those housekeeping ones, we'll just do with the voice vote, just for speed. Um, anything having to do with changing the bylaws, I think we're gonna try with the clicker this year. Any zoning articles, we're definitely gonna do the clickers because remember it's two thirds. And it will instantly give us the tally and a, whether a passed or fail. And so that's gonna show up on the big screen. Behind the monitor, me and Stephanie is a big screen with a rear projection that will show what the article is and it's gonna show us on that screen the tally and the pass fail. If the vote is within six votes between the pass and the fail, so it's 51 to 49. Usually when it's that close a vote on a voice vote, people doubted the moderator, five people would stand up. We're gonna show the names. How did everybody vote? So all we have to do to that is advance the PowerPoint presentation and it's gonna have three precincts at a time. Everybody listed in those precincts, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. We'll just scroll through the seven screens. I think they said, it'll take two and a half minutes. So seven, was I got 30 seconds? Of, no, it can't be 30 seconds. I don't know, 10 seconds a screen or 20 seconds a screen, whatever it's gonna be. Enough time to look and to see if your vote's up there and make sure that you are recorded and how everybody else voted. There won't be a second vote. It's gonna be, we're gonna press the clicker once and that's gonna be our standing vote. If 30 members then arise to make a roll call vote, all that's gonna do now, instead of doing an actual roll call and a second vote, is it's gonna memorialize that screen. It'll be marked in the clerk's records as a roll call vote and the clerk will probably just print it out and put it in her official records that she has to maintain. So we're not gonna have two votes, we're not gonna have three votes. Um, 
on one of the articles last year during the special, was it? We did have a roll call. Three votes. First, it was the vote, voice vote. They doubted it. We did a standing vote. They doubted that. 30 people stood up. We had a roll call. And then the clerk and I had to like count. And that the whole process between the initial voice vote and the end of the roll call took about 45 minutes. Now, it's going to take us two and a half, three minutes to have effectively a roll call. So it's going to change how we vote. It's going to change the time limits. And it's going to change the culture of the meeting. So you guys are all new. But for the older town meeting members, it's going to be a difference for them because we're not going to be yelling out yes, no anymore. We're not going to be standing up and having people walk up and down the aisles counting and going, I think I got you. Um, it's going to be just tallied. Boom, we're going to be done. Yeah? A couple of questions on the electronic voting. Will all the pass around? Um, records of who voted how will that be the next, after the, the meeting? Yep. Um, we haven't quite figured out how quickly they're going to get it. We'll get the uh, stick that night with the data. It'll be pushed out as a PowerPoint. Um, the, the voting software display sits on a PowerPoint presentation somehow. We'll get that data that night. It'll go to Dave Good. Um, between him and Joan Roman, who runs our, our web, it will be posted. We're figuring by the end of the next business day all the articles and how everybody voted on each of those articles. It's going to be a, um, a PDF format, so no one can go online and change it. But if you wanted to get their background data, so you can do graphs or spreadsheets or do whatever you want to do with it, you'll make a request to Joan and she'll get you that data within, I think she said three or four days, because it's really not a top priority for her. But she'll get you the data, um, all the background data. So it will be available on the website. I want them to put a, um, a link. If you go to the town's website right now on the side, it says gov government. You click that, it says town meeting, and it brings you to the town meeting web page. I'm trying to get them to just put a link right on the web page to the voting data. So instead of trying to give everybody a URL that long, they'll just be able to click right through to it. We'll work that out in the next week or two. We'll, we're going to have the first night. Well, you're all going to get that sheet. Um, I don't know if you saw it yet. There's a guide to electronic voting. Um, yeah, let me just hold yours up. So on this, it's got all the questions and answers. The committee, we spent a good, a good amount of time working this out, getting all the questions and answers worked out so that this will give you most of the answers, but the system itself is extremely simple to use. Like I said, I'll call voting open. I press the button, 20 seconds. All we as the users have to do is press yes or no. It's going to be more, I think, the question of when we use it and in what, what manner our name's going to be displayed. And frankly, as I even say on that sheet, we're all new to this. Um, it's going to be a trial and error. Do we want to use it all the time? Do we want to just use it once in a while? And the town of Brookline, what they decided they were going to do was everyone sitting down, he called the vote, all the yes voters rise and press their clicker. <laughs> OK, all the no voters rise and press no. And after two votes, the moderator kind of looked around and said, um, it's kind of dumb. Do you want to keep doing that? And they, no, we don't want to stand up anymore. <laughs> so, you know, they, it's a learning process. We're all going to be kind of learning, but the use of the system, if you can run your phone, you can run your TV, you can run this thing. My whole goal, one of our older town meeting members, Elsie Fury, she's been there 34 years, I think. During the um, whole process, my thing I kept saying is, can Elsie use this? Is Elsie going to be able to figure this out? And if it always came back yes, then I was fine with that. Because the last thing I want is some longtime town meeting member to get all mad that we're using this newfangled device and they can't do it. Um, so it, 
It's got to be simple. It is simple. So yeah. we're going to know what the vote is. Yes. Are we, we, we going to know how particular people voted on ours? If, if it's within six, we're going to show how everybody voted. If five members rise, just like for a counted vote, if we do a voice vote, five members rise, we do a counted vote. If we do an electronic vote and five members rise, we'll pull the screen back and we'll see how everybody voted. But again, that data will be online the next day, right. even if we don't do it that night. I would, excuse me, I would prefer not to do it on every vote, strictly because it'll add three minutes to each article. And 150 articles by three minutes, that's another four and a half hours of time. So as the committee and my preference was just tallies, unless we really want to know. And then if you want, you want to really see, you get five people to stand up. Get, just, hey, stand up, stand up, stand up. You can always get five people to rise. It's not an issue. Some people on the other side of the room, oh, he stood up, I'm going to stand up too. It's jumping jacks. Some people want to rise up on every article. So it's, it's not a big deal to see the screen. Or if it's a really close vote. And I kind of say, well, you know what, I think everyone wants to sh show it. Well, I think it'd be interesting that if people tell you to support the article, but then you really don't know if they did not Well, you'll know the they next They may change one of your votes down the line. It may not be that night. It be, or it may be that night, but you're not getting the information until the next day. Well, we hope that you vote in the best interest of the town and you're conscious yeah. not on whether or not your buddy voted for something or not. Yeah. <laughs> but you, your point's taken. It'd be nice to see how everybody voted, but they'd say for the majority of the votes, you'd have to wait till the next day till it gets up. But there, you know, let's face it, 90% of the warrant is procedural stuff that goes year to year to year to year. It's the citizen articles. There's about 10 of them this year where a citizen can bring a warrant article by filing a request and get 10 signatures. You can get your warrant, uh, you can get a warrant article on for especially you need 100 signatures. So it's really not hard to get something on the warrant, but you have to do it in December and January to get it onto the warrant. And then we're going to talk about it. Good, bad, or ugly, we'll talk about it. And sometimes it might be the first thing you rise is to move the question. Um, a lot of people are overwhelmed their first year, the first two years. They'll never say a word. Other people jump right in. They want to be heard. They want to get their questions out the first year. And on any night, if you have any questions, I usually get there about 7.30. So if you get there a few minutes early, just come up and ask me the question, even if it's totally silly. Where do I put my recycling? Big green bin. Um, I'll take the time to talk to you. I'll take the time to point out how you can do something. Or if you have a, uh, um, if you've brought a substitute motion and it's on everybody's chair and it's been there, please see me the night we're going to talk about it because I want to recognize you first. Because there's no use you doing a substitute motion and then never getting a chance to address the crowd and introduce it. Just because you put it in the chairs doesn't mean it's before us. So you've got to get up. Um, Got your first name, Watts? David Watts. David Watts. David Watts, substitute motion. It's no good if you don't get up first or second and introduce that, make a substitute. Someone will second it. Everything has to be seconded. Someone will second it. Um, then we can talk about it. But if you never get up, you just wasted 300 pieces of paper. So see me beforehand. I'll put you in the top of the list. Um, and I'll get you right in first because I want the debate to be when everything in front of us. I don't want anything coming up at the end. It's kind of silly. Just very quickly, I think it's the reconsideration process. We have one of these votes where it's something loses by five votes. Right. Everyone's votes are shown the next day. You may have an opportunity well, if to you go wanna, out in yep, do a our, little bit of uh, Our bylaws okay. provide for reconsideration. <laughs> Well, state law provides for reconsideration. Our bylaws provide specifically that if you want to reconsider an article, you have to give notice of it the night we voted on it. So Monday night, we're going to vote on articles one through eight. 
guessing. You don't like the way Article 7 um, ended, the results in Article 7. You get up and say, um, I know your name, but I can't remember. Steve? Yeah, I know you from somewhere. I know I do. Um, Steve McCalco, Precinct, 8, Precinct 7, whatever. Um, motion to reconsider Article 7. And I'm going to ask, did you vote on the prevailing side? So you have to technically vote on the side that wins to f file for reconsideration. Now I ask that. I don't know if you're lying to me unless we use the clicker. And then I can go back and check. Before I could never. So in the moderator association, there's always a little saying, it's the lion-hearted moderator who really presses because you're really gonna get into a bait whether the person lied, but with the clickers, we can know. So now you've made a motion to reconsider. I make a note of that. Marika Pelka makes a note of that. And you can bring that reconsideration up any time before the meeting dissolves. So as long as we're there, three nights later, you can say, I move for reconsideration of Article 7. And I'll say, oh, oh yeah, Steve, you did, okay. You can bring that. What new information do you have that's going to sway us? And you can't just get up and say, well, uh, the new information, I got all my buddies in the hall. That's not new information. You've got to be able to present to us something that's going to change our mind, some set of facts. We didn't understand that you can really buy a police cruiser for 25,000 bucks if you go to this dealer as opposed to 36,000 if you buy it through the state program. Okay, that sounds like a good thing to me. That's new information. Um, we usually ask for that new information because we just don't want to keep debating the same thing over and over and over. Once it's done, it's done. So you make your motion for reconsideration. You answer yes when I asked if you voted on the prevailing side. Then it's up to you to bring it up again. When you bring it up, whether or not we're going to vote to reconsider is debatable. So we can have a whole debate whether or not we want to reconsider. Then the motion to reconsider has to pass by a two-thirds vote. Then we debate the article. So it could be a long process. Um, usually the debate on the motion to reconsider would be, well, what's new information? Well, I got this new information. Oh, okay. Someone's going to get up and say, no, that's not new. I mean, we just would argue about it once. So. It does, and you'll notice that Al Tosti moves reconsideration on every single finance article after the night's done. The reason he's doing that is if the states, uh, you, know, you all know what the cherry sheet is, right? The cherry sheet's the state, how much money we're gonna get from the state. If the cherry sheet comes out late and we get more money, he wants to rejigger the numbers. If we get less money, he wants to rejigger the numbers. So he moves reconsideration on every single finance article. That's what he's doing it for. Um, if he moved reconsideration and you didn't, and you got new information, you could maybe try and convince him to move for re to open his motion for reconsideration. But if you want to, that do it yourself. And it's usually right before we move to adjourn. I'll ask that question. And you, you got to really stand up and yell, because at that point, people are shuffling about, and making noise, and heading out the door. So really get my attention, get my ear. And I, I listen for that. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, so uh, I noticed that each precinct collects leadership with a clerk the and a chair. Um, so I wanted to ask what, what that's about. And I also noticed some of the precincts are having public meetings beforehand. Mm -hmm. And why are some doing it and not others? And what's well, we'll, involved in doing that? We'll start with the first part first. Each precinct has to get organized. Uh, the clerk will, I think she sends everybody a separate notice saying your precinct is going to um, get organized on the 28th, the 30th, you're going to meet in the front hall left or out in the side corridor. You elect a clerk and a chairman. The reason you do that is if you have a vacancy, precincts one, 
precinct six and I believe 21 have vacancies this year. You as the town meeting members for the, in those six, three precincts elect a town meeting member to fill that vacancy. So the chair would open the meeting. We got any nominations? Oh yeah, my neighbor wants to be. What's his name? Joe Smith. Okay. Anybody else? Nope. I'm in favor of Joe Smith. Joe's elected. The clerk writes it down, gives it to Stephanie Lucarelli. That's their the function of those. But it also has a, I believe in the old days, a, a um, more practical function is they would distribute anything that had to be distributed before we use the mails or maybe we're going to use the internet someday. We can step into the 21st century. But those meetings, the precinct meetings, they're organized by the town meeting members. That's not something that this building does or I do. The town meeting members in your precinct will get on the phone, call each other, let's have a meeting. Um, we're going to do it at the, at the old age center, we're going to do it at the Dallas School, the Bishop School, Sunday afternoon, and they get the word out. At those meetings, you'll do a little bit of looking at the warrant, have come up with any questions, but also the citizens of your precinct will come. You don't get a huge turnout, but you'll get some people from your precinct to come, and they'll ask questions. What's this all about? What's that all about? You should vote this way. Um, this is why I think you should do this. And that's your chance to meet with the citizens. Um, as a town meeting member, I've received, I've been a town meeting member since 94. I've received three phone calls. Um, and each one of those times I got a phone call, I voted the way that person asked me to because, heck, I got a call. Someone cares. I'm going to vote the way that person does. Why not, you know? Yeah, this, they wanted to do it, so I'll vote that way. Um, so that's what those meetings are for, what the chair is. So there's no real heavy lifting. So if they want to make you the chair, okay. <laughs> Usually it's the person that doesn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's them. <clears throat> Anything else about procedure? What? I have actually two questions. Yeah, yeah I'll Just take those back. <clears throat> yep, go ahead. You said that um, when the first time you stand up, Yes. Is that within each article? Or each article. Okay, within each article. Okay. So our bylaws provide, I think it's Article 1, Section 1. First time you address the meeting on any article, you have seven minutes. The second time, you have five minutes. It used to be 15 minutes. Then it got changed down to 10. And I think three, three years ago, um, Town Meeting Procedure Committee, we changed it down to seven. Because 10 minutes is a long time. Seven minutes is a long time. If you get up and talk for seven minutes, you're going to put the crowd to sleep and they're going to vote against you because you took seven minutes of time. If you don't, can't say it in three or four minutes, refine your speech. Some people get up and they ad lib for the seven minutes and they're just like, okay, well, you know. And, Please, just wrap it up, wrap it up. Um, so you should be able to get down in three, five, four, five minutes. If not, you should have refined your speech before you got up there. The second trip to the mic, um, it's the courteous thing to do. Does, it says it's sort of in the bylaws, but it doesn't really, it's not a mandate. They don't have, they don't have to be called until everyone else has had a chance to speak once. So some people get up, give us their seven minutes of wisdom, and instantly sit down and raise their hand again, thinking they're going to get called for another five minutes. It's not going to happen. Because if there's 30 other people that want to talk, I'm not going to call Mr. Jones for another five minutes and have 12 minutes of his wisdom to the exclusion of everybody else. Um, the moderator's job is to control but not stifle the debate. So I take that list, but I don't necessarily follow it. I, just because you were quick on the draw and got your hand up first doesn't mean you're going to get called right away. Um, you can tell, you'll be able to tell after two or three meetings what some people's um, 
propensity and leaning is on most things. Oh, him. He's going to get up and say, this is terrible. Oh, her. She's going to get up and this is the best thing since sliced bread. Well, I'm not going to call six terribles in a row and then sneak in one good person. I want both sides of the debate. People get mad at me because they don't get called right away. It's like, too bad. That's my choice. I mean, that's the one power the moderator has. Um, so, and the reason, only way I use it is to keep both sides of the debate going. And that's sort of what the purpose of raising your hand is. Um, some people have advocated we should have a yes, no microphone. I don't think we should. Because if there's 18 people in the yes mic and one no person is going to feel pretty intimidated and not want to get up there and speak against the 18 or 20 other people. So that you may never hear them. That's why I don't like the yes, no mics. And it also doesn't allow anybody to terminate debate. I mean, if there's 18 no, yes people and one no person, you can get up there and terminate debate. Um, yeah, so it could be used as a tactic. So we don't, we don't use that. The only time we use it, when we have resolutions, which I mixed feelings this year. I don't like resolutions because some of them are, we shouldn't be, a, we should be nuclear free. We shouldn't have, um, you know, national issues. Uh, one of them this year, it's gone by the wayside. But one, we shouldn't be in the wars. There was art, debate articles about that. We shouldn't spank our kids. There was something about that years ago. Those aren't town issues. I don't want to debate it because there's nothing we can do about it. So resolutions have kind of fallen out of favor for that reason. People finally got it. But there's one resolution on this year, and I put it on. It's about the clickers. It's the next to the last article. Do we like them? Do we want to continue to use them? Do we like how they change the meeting? And this will be your time to get up and tell us. And then we're going to vote on it. Maybe with the clicker. But maybe not. I'm not sure. I haven't decided that one yet. Because um, that's our only chance to really debate whether or not we like the way the meetings change, we like the way the clickers work, we like what they're doing. That'll be our one chance to do it. And if we vote yes, well, the next article is will give us the money to buy them. So that's the one resolution this year. And yet generally, I don't like them. Because, you know, why should someone tell me I can't ride my bike on the left side of the street or something like this? I mean, silly stuff, these resolutions. Oh, and one more point. If anything is put in your chair that's not signed, toss it. Because if someone doesn't have the gumption to put their name on it, they're not going to stand up and talk about it. Don't even bother reading it. If it's on the chairs, it should be signed. Otherwise, I'll tell you to disregard it. That said, neither of my things are signed. <laughs> but they're going to get mailed to you. But if you're going to put it on the chairs, sign it. Put your name in precinct so people will know who it's from. Otherwise, it could just be propaganda. And why not to do something? Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I hope you all got something. And I'll see you in two weeks.